we continue in the book of Genesis, chapter 27, starting at verse 30. Cheaters never prosper. Stop trying to do things your own way instead of doing things God's way. Surrender control to the Holy Spirit and let go of the lying, scheming, fooling, trickery, convincing, forcing, and deception. It's a payback, I think. Those who gain through cheating will face the consequences, and you will pay for your deception in the end. And when you try to steal blessings from others, it creates a big mess, as we will see. Uh, I must confess one of my deceptions, a family deception. When I was younger, a young adult, I really wanted to have credit cards. And of course, my parents were against it. Johnny, don't get in debt. Credit cards are like evil. And I didn't listen. I wanted credit cards. And I applied, and you know what they told me? No, no credit history, not a good credit score. And you know what I needed to get my credit cards? A co-signer. So I secretly forged my mom's signature. I had stolen her identity, her information, and she was a co-signer. And I got a ton of credit cards. And I don't know if she ever found that it was one of my family's sins. If she ever pulled her credit report, you know, she would have found out. <laughs> And I'm ashamed, I'm embarrassed, but we have all done things deceiving, fooling, tricking, trying to get our own way, trying to benefit ourselves. And this is the story of Jacob and Esau and their father um, Isaac. We have a deceiving duo. It's mother Rebecca and son Jacob. And they plot and they plan together in their scheming. And the apple does not fall far from the deceptive tree. Because I believe the son got his uh, scheming and his deceit from his mom. She put him up to it. She plotted it. She, you know, let's make the food. Let's kill the goats. Wear these clothes. Do what I say. Like mother like son stop stealing blessings let's read it genesis 27 verse 30 now it came about as soon as isaac had finished blessing jacob and jacob had hardly gone out from the presence of isaac his father that esau his brother came in from his hunting do you remember the story to catch you up? Father is giving out blessings. And Esau is so excited because he's the firstborn. He's chosen by his father. He wants the blessing of the firstborn. And with this can come inheritance and riches and being the head of the clan and all sorts of spiritual implications. And so he's gone out hunting. He's going to prepare dad's favorite dish, but mom has put son, her favorite son, Jacob, into the plot. We're going to, you know, get the goats. We're going to prepare them just like daddy likes. You're going to wear the goat skin. You're going to wear his clothes. You're going to feel like him. You're going to smell like him, and we're going to cook like him, and we're going to fool your blind dad. And so, the blessing has been stolen. Jacob has just finished fooling his father, and he has just left in the nick of time. And boy, it was too close for comfort. He just walked out of the room when his brother has just hunted, and he's been cooking, and now he comes in to see his father. It is a close call. Verse 31, then he also made savory food and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's game 
that you may bless me. Father and son, such a joy and excitement. Are you so blessed by your kids? Are you blessed to have wonderful parents? Maybe you have the best, greatest father ever. And I think he comes in with joy and anticipation and a big smile. And I, I caught it and I cooked it and I made it just like you like, Daddy. I'm making your favorite dish. And I can't wait to become the leader of the clan, the inheritance, the blessing, a wonderful future that you're going to give me, Father. Now remember, Jacob and Esau are twins, but one has to come out first, right? Esau comes out first. Jacob is holding on to his, his ankle, his heel, right? Heel catcher, deceiver, and one beats the other. But whoever comes out first becomes the firstborn with all the rights, with all the blessings. But there was a prophecy to the mom, to Rebecca, and God said, I'm going to switch it around because the older shall serve the younger. And God's into changing things, traditions, the blessings of man. God has other plans. And it's sad, but God has rejected Esau and he has accepted Jacob. Verse 23. Isaac, his father, said to him, Who are you? And he said, I'm your son, your firstborn, Esau. 33, then Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was he then who hunted game and brought it to me so that I ate of all of it before you came and blessed him? Yes, he shall be blessed. The jig is up. Father realizes I have made the worst mistake. I have given the blessing of the firstborn to the secondborn. My favorite has missed out. And Jacob has fooled me and deceived me and tricked me. And I gave the blessing to the wrong son. Have your kids ever fooled you? Have they tricked you? But eventually it comes to light and you're like, how could you do such a thing? Your sins will find you out. <laughs> Fooling with food. <laughs> do you remember where this happened before? Esau was fooled with food before. I'm so hungry. I've come in from hunting. I'm famished. Give me some of that porridge. Give me some of your wonderful dinner and he's like no unless you know you give me your right of the firstborn okay what is that to me you know i just want to eat fooled with food and now father is fooled with food and he gives away the blessing because oh it's my favorite and surely my son has made it no your wife made it and your other son brought it in and fooled you. My tummy is filled now. I can't eat anymore. You're too late. Have you ever been too late and missed out? You're a, a day late and a dollar short, and you missed the blessing. You missed the job. You didn't get the interview. You didn't get the position. You didn't get the girl. You, you lost out. But it's OK because God's got a plan. The plans of men fail, but the plans of God succeed. And there's an important concept to realize. Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. God says, Jacob is my chosen. He's the Christian, he's the believer. He becomes, his name is changed to Israel. He has 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. He represents the Jews. And the believers, Jacob is God's chosen, and God will keep his promises to Jacob. Esau is the lost. Esau is the rejected. And even though the rejected gets blessed by men and promises, it doesn't matter because it's what God does that matters. And Esau will be rejected. He will be the father of the Edomites who will pass from history. 
but the Jews still remain today. The promises of God will come true. What do they say? The early bird catches the worm. I guess the early sun steals the blessing, the early twin. <laughs> Verse 34, when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and he said to his father, bless me, even me also, O my father. He's crying because he's been robbed. He's been stolen of what tradition says should be his, of what man says should be his. But God has other plans. Have people ever robbed you of your blessing? Have you been robbed of an inheritance, of a promise, of a pledge, of a vow? And people break their promises. People steal what's yours. That inheritance should have been mine. Why did you get it? And we cry, because man has taken away our blessing. We try so hard, we hunger for approval, for blessings, for gifts, for favor. Maybe so desperately, you wanted your father, your mother, your boss, your spouse, your loved one to approve of you and say, you're so good and you do, do such a good job, but they'd never give it to you. I understand, but what's more important than the blessings of men is the blessings of God. If you can gain Jesus' approval, that's what really counts. The tears, the crying out, the broken heart. Jesus can mend it. Verse 35, and he said, your brother came deceitfully and has taken away your blessing. Then he said, is he not rightly named Jacob? And the word Jacob, his name is translated deceiver, heel catcher, or even surplanter. For he has surplanted me these two times. He's tricked me twice, right? First, the right of the firstborn, and now the blessing too. I am so upset. He's fooled me twice. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Verse, middle of 36. He took away my birthright. And behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? Surely there's another blessing. Oh, no. The blessing of the firstborn, there is only one. The blessing of second place is so much different. You see, for the Jews, this is illegal. This is binding. This is a bequest of dad that's given to the firstborn. It's special. It's unbreakable. It's a promise. It's a vow. It's a commitment. And father just cannot easily switch the blessings. But again, I believe more important than the blessing of men is the blessing of God. So maybe you missed out on the blessing. It's okay. <laughs> Get Jesus' blessing. Become a Christian. Become a follower because the blessings of God are bigger and greater and even eternal. Sometimes the blessings of men, they fail, the big promises. I've been there where we waited for the inheritance and then in the end we got a big zip. But can I tell you, the inheritance of Christ and of our Heavenly Father will blow everyone away. Some blessings cannot be reversed. Verse 37. But Isaac replied to Esau, Behold, 
I have made him your master, and all his relatives I have given to him as servants. I'm afraid you're going to serve him. You ever say that to your brother and sister? You're not the boss of me. You get it yourself. I'm not your slave. Well, in this case, yeah, Esau will be the servant of Jacob. And the Edomites will serve the Israelis. It is the blessing of men and it is the plan of God. And with grain and new wine, I have sustained him. I've blessed him financially and his farms and his ranches and his family and all his descendants, which will be the Jews, right? The 12 sons of Jacob will be the tribes of Israel. Now, as for you then, what can I do, my son? It's too late. I can't unscramble the eggs. No use crying over spilled mil milk, right? He stole the blessing. He has first place. He has dominance. He has leadership. And spiritually, he has the blessings of God, which is the most important thing. Some vows cannot be changed. It's kind of like wedding vows, right? You run to the chapel, you say your I do's, you get your license, and the wedding's done. And you wake up the next day, and maybe you're like, what did I do? I want to reverse it. I'm sorry. No, you're married. The vows, the promises, the blessings have been bestowed, and you just can't change it. And can I tell you, Jacob will learn this lesson because he's going to marry the wrong bride. He's going to be fooled. He's going to be deceived. Someone's going to, a daddy's going to dress up the wrong daughter, right? The older one. And make her look like the correct one. And he's going to wake up in the morning and, I they I've been <laughs> deceived. What can I do? I'm sorry, you're stuck. Because what goes around comes around. And if you live lying and fooling and deceiving others, it will come back on you. Verse 38. Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. He's begging, he's pleading, he's crying. So Esau lifted his voice and wept. Does it break your heart to see your children cry? They beg, they plead, but sometimes things are beyond our control. Sometimes God overrides and we must trust him. What is God doing in my life? and in the life of my children. It is the painful tears of being rejected. Have you been there? In the book of Hebrews 12, 16 and 17, it explains this very detailed. That there be no immoral or godless person like Esau, who sold his own birthright for a single meal, for you know that even afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. Do you see this rejection, his tears of being rejected? For he found no place for repentance, though he sought for it with tears. God had rejected Esau. And now Father is rejecting him. I'm sorry, you don't get the patriarchal blessing, the blessing of the firstborn. Can I tell you, Esau was rejected by God. There's a reason he's immoral, he's godless. He is carnal. He thinks more about food than spiritual things. Sometimes people throw away the things of God and spiritual things, and it becomes too late, and then they wake up and they've missed out on the inheritance of the Lord, the things of God, 
They miss out on heaven because they were carnal, they were godless, they were immoral, and they, they spit upon the cross and the things of Christ and God's holy word and the church. And now they're crying, but it's not tears of repentance. They're not repenting for their sin. They're crying because they have missed out on some of the greatest things ever. 39. When Isaac, his father, answered, I'm sorry, 39. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fertility of the earth shall be your dwelling, and away from the dew of heaven from above. I take away from you the blessing that I've given to your younger brother, Jacob. You'll not have fertility of your farms, your ranches, your cattle. You'll not have the dew. You'll not have the rains. You'll not have the financial blessings. Instead, verse 40, by your sword you shall live. You shall have a life of violence. What did Jesus say? Those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. This is going to be your future and your relatives will be a violent people. And your brother you shall serve. He'll be your master, yes. But it shall come about when you become restless that you will break his yoke from your neck. And it's true, finally, the Edomites, descendants of Esau, got tired of serving Israel and specifically Judah. And in 2 Kings 8, 20 through 22, they broke free from their servitude and became free. You see, it's not just the words of men here with this patriarch. He is prophesying the things of God that are in the future that will come true. So be careful not to despise uh, the things of God and prophecy and the gifts and when God is speaking through your parents. Isaac's divine prophecy. And Hebrews 11.20 says, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even regarding things to come. He prophesied by faith. God spoke through him by faith. And see the order, Jacob is first now, and Esau is second. Mom's rescue plan, it fails. And she loses her favorite son, Jacob. Mom's very much a part of all this plotting and scheming and planning. Do what I say. I know it will work. No, no, I'll be found out. Dad will curse me, right? No, I'll take the curse. Do what I say, my favorite son. Yes? Verse 41. So Esau bore a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. I hate that stupid blessing. I'm not going to serve my brother. I'm not going to be a slave. I want to be financially independent. I want to succeed. I want the blessings of God. I want to be the leader. I want to get the inheritance. I want to have all the stuff. I want God's blessing. Sometimes we really want the blessings of God, but we really don't want God. Sometimes people want all the things that Jesus can give them, but they really don't want Christ. But I'm sorry, it is a package deal. You cannot receive Christ and then throw him under the bus and think you're going to get all the blessings. No. If you have Christ, you have all the blessings, but if you don't have Christ, you have made the biggest mistake of all. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. 
what a mess this has made. And you thought, it's just a little white lie. You know, I'll just deceive my family, my parents, my kids, and the, the little family secret, it gets bigger and bigger, and anger and revenge and plotting someone else's demise. I mean, this thing is out of control. <laughs> the anger is so great, I'm going to kill my own brother. This is horrible. Plotting murder. The grudge grows into hate, and the hate grows into murder plans. I'm going to kill you. Have you ever yelled that to a family member? I'm going to kill you for what you did to me. <laughs> Brings me back. <laughs> Being the middle child, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> crazy, crazy what goes on in families. Verse 42. Now, when the words of her elder son Esau were reported to Rebekah, to mom, she seems to find out what is going on in this house, <laughs> right? The antenna is up. She sent and called her younger son Jacob. That's her favorite, right? Esau is daddy's favorite and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau is consoling himself concerning you by planning to kill you. He's trying to get some comfort. He's plotting your demise, how he's going to do you in. This is very dangerous. You know, father is getting old. He's way up there. He's going, he's blind now. But sometimes parents just live on, right? Maybe you have a family member and you're waiting. When can I get the inheritance? And they just seem to outlive everybody. <laughs> and dad's going to keep living and living and living. But they don't know that yet, right? They think it's close. Oh, he's, he's on his deathbed. And then all of a sudden, he kind of recovers, right? <sighs> but they don't know this. Verse 43, now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. And arise, flee to Haran, to my brother Laban. Do you remember Laban? Cha-ching, dollar signs in his eyes. Oh, man, you're rich, and you come for my sister, and we'll make the deal, and we'll sell her, and look at the gold bracelets, and the gold ring in her nose, and the ten camels. I'll take care of the camels, and I'll help you unload all the riches, and oh, gifts for me, too. Oh, great, we want a big dowry for my you know, for my sister, we'll sell her. She can marry, you know. And now sister's like, you got to stay with my brother, with my family. You must find sanctuary far from here because my worry is one of my sons is going to kill the other. This is a nightmare. Verse 44. Stay with him a few days until your brother's fury subsides. Follow my plans. Mother knows best. Just for a few days. But the days turn into months. The months turn into years. About 20 years. <laughs> and mother is now robbed of her favorite son because of the deceit and the big mess that he and she have made of it. Have you ever just made a whole mess of your life? <laughs> made a mess of your family? And the one that you love the most, you lose that one. And you shouldn't have done it your way. You should have done it God's way. And she has no idea. She's thinking, well, you'll just be gone a short while. No, 20 years. 45, until your brother's anger against you subsides and he forgets what you did to him. Some things we never forget. I can remember my childhood. I could remember what my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad, I could remember what they did to me. 
And sometimes they say, I'll never forget what you did. <laughs> now, as Christians, we have to forgive, right? But sometimes it's hard to forget. Sometimes we've got to give the pain and, and grow past it and hopefully over time. But some of us never forget. Then I will send and get you from there. Why should I be bereaved of both? of you both in one day. I mean, my husband's on his deathbed. I'm going to lose my husband, and then I'm going to lose my son. This is crazy. I need to save you. I send you away to sanctuary, to my family's home far away. You will be safe. Now, verse 46, Rebecca said to Isaac, oh, I, I missed one thing. Where does this say it? Um, it was in 45. I missed it. Until your brother's anger against you subsides and he forgets what you did to him. It's very nonchalant. I almost missed it. You know, son, will have you escaped so that your brother forgets what you did to him. You know, all the plotting and all the conniving and the deception, you did this against him. Uh, correction, what we did to him, Mom, wasn't it your plan? And I didn't even want to do it. And I said, no, I don't want to deceive my father. He's going to curse me. It's going to make things worse. And you pushed me, and, and, and it was our plan. <laughs> you ever do that where you change the wording? Oh, this is your sin. No, it was our sin. Didn't you put us up to this? And she almost kind of got away with it. Verse 46. Rebecca said to Isaac, I am tired of living because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife from the daughters of Heth like these, from the daughters of the land, this Ca Canaan, right, Canaanites. I don't, I don't like these Canaanite women. They're so pagan and evil and wicked. What good will my life be to me? Now, the oldest, Esau, had married polygamous, multiple wives from Canaan. And they were wicked, and their parents couldn't stand them. And Isaac and Rebekah didn't like them, and... And she knows her husband doesn't like these Canaanite women. And you see she's plotting again. She has another plan. She's going to talk her husband into it. Oh, my, we better not let, you know, Jacob marry these Canaanite women. We've got to send him somewhere. Where should we send him? Maybe back to my family and he'll find nice, good believers like me. And, and they'll be moral and godly. That's where he needs to get a wife. And so she plants the idea into her husband's head so that later he'll be like, yeah, you know, we need to send him out there instead of like, yeah, let's have him run for his life. It's like, no, let's have him go find a nice bride back home with your family. So mother sways father to send Jacob away for a bride for protection from his brother. Wow. What is the point of all this story? Why has God written this for our benefit? What are we to do with it? We need to live God's way. Don't do it your way anymore. Do it Jesus' way. I was thinking of the mess-ups of my life and times I've lied to family and friends, cheating, stealing, deceiving. Sometimes we take from family and we think, well, it's okay, you know. My parents won't prosecute me. I'm kind of borrowing it forever, right? <laughs> Hurting, using others for our own benefit. Trying to get ahead, we justify it. We're I'm trying to help God out, right? He wants to bless me, so I'll help him so that he can bless me. No, you need to let God do it his way, his timing. Don't interfere. Trust. Rest. Wait. 
I was thinking of the famous story and movie and musical La Miserable. You know the story. You must see it. It's been remade again and again. And it's a Christian story. Some don't even know it. That the ex-convict Jean Valjean, he has been set free. Of course, what did he steal? Bread so he wouldn't starve. He's locked up for like... 10 years in France, and this is way back in time, trying to survive. I think he broke like a window to get bread. And finally he's released, but ex-convicts in that culture are marred for life. They cannot get jobs, they're destitute, they're starving. And a bishop, a priest, a believer, a Christian, brings him into his home. And he says, we will feed you, we will give you shelter, we will help you. And in the middle of the night, what does he do to the bishop? He attacks him, he knocks him out, and he steals from him the precious silver uh, trinkets. Silverware, I think in the end he got candlesticks. And then he gets caught. He tries to steal the blessings, right? And then he gets caught by the police, and the police bring him back for prosecution. And the priest says, oh, no, he didn't steal from me. I gave these things to him. And the police are like, no, Bishop, this is crazy. He's this notorious you know, criminal, and we caught him red-handed, and he's got all the silver. And the priest says, no, set him free. I give him these blessings. And the priest says this. And I lost my place. <laughs> and the priest says this. So he gives him forgiveness, pardon, help, blessing. Gives him his silver, all his silver, I think, in the end. And he says to the criminal... With this silver, I have bought your soul. I have ransomed you from fear and hatred. And now I give you back to God. And Jean Valjean, you know, now his life is turned around. And he lives to help others and to give grace and mercy and food and jobs and shelter. And he becomes this radical Christian of doing good deeds. You've got to see La Miserable. <sighs> People steal blessings. Have you been robbed like me? Sometimes you get robbed by your own family and friends, your loved ones, your associates, your co-workers, and they have stolen your gifts, your blessings, your treasures, your monies, your promises. And we want to cry like Esau. I've been robbed. I wanted so bad to have these blessings, this position, this favor, this, this grace. But I console you, because if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, Jesus will replace your stolen blessings. And he'll give you even more if you will turn to him, if you will trust in him. He will give you blessings far greater than those of men. But you must know who you are in Christ. You must choose to follow Jesus in order to get his blessings. To be a follower of Christ. To humbly come to his cross. To receive his work, his sacrifice. The payment of our sin, Jesus paid the price. And when you become a Christian, you get the blessings of God. Oh, but I've messed up. I've been deceitful. I've done horrible sins. I understand, but a son is always a son. A daughter is always a daughter of God. A believer is always a Christian. And if you know who you are in Christ, and you live who you are in Christ, and you believe who you are in Christ, the blessings of God will come. And even in spite of Jacob messing it all up, 
and his stealing and his treachery and his deceit and his mess ups. He's still a Jew. Jacob is the father of the Jews, God's chosen people. And we become spiritual descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we are grafted in. And if you know who you are, you will get the blessings of God in spite of yourself because it's grace, it's forgiveness, it's mercy, it's gifts of love that we do not deserve. Do it Jesus' way. Come clean. Leave it all behind. Repent. Ask for his help. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, in his word and in his blessings. Follow Christ's plan, his way and his timing. Because Jesus really wants to bless you. Cheaters never prosper. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, bless us. We truly need your blessings. Father God in heaven, do you have a blessing for us as followers of Christ? We want your blessing above the blessings of men, above the blessings of family and co-workers and this world. Your blessings are far greater, most important, and even eternal. And you make your blessings happen for us. May we trust in you, in your promises, your word, your inheritance, all your gifts you have for us, knowing that it doesn't depend on us because we're chosen, because you love us, even in spite of our weaknesses and our failings. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to celebrate with communion, being first Sunday.